Greetings, Earthlings. Today I want to present some fun ELA games that you could do in class, you could do with a friend, you could do traveling. Some of these might be for younger students. I know I've enjoyed these when I was really young, but also, you know, I, I just actually was in an airplane and in an airport and kind of bored, and I was playing these with adults as well. So here they are. So here's a quick little game. This is what I call a partial anagram. I had a teacher present this to me in first grade, and I absolutely loved it. So you start off with any word, and this works great in a class or with a friend. So let's say the word is apple, and you have... Now, if you, if you really want to kind of like push yourself, you don't set a time limit. But in practice, I find that giving it like a minute or two minutes, maybe five minutes at the most, is probably more fun. So let's just say two minutes. So take two minutes and see how many words you can come up with using the letters from Apple. Now you can, so it's called a partial anagrams, anagram because you don't have to use all the letters from Apple. And you can reuse the letter P's because they're two P's. So here are the words that I, I've come up with. Maybe I've missed one or two or more than that, but it, I find it kind of a creative little game to get your you know, ELA brain flowing. So have a go at that, whether you're just bored or you know, just for fun. It's not really like a core ELA skill or anything, but it could be a nice little activity to be thrown in in moderation. All right, and then here just some, clearly you know, the larger the words, the more words you can come up with. So in terms of like a class, you might want to try a word like laundromat or lemonade and see how many you can come up with. And you know, see how many your friend can come up with. Maybe you guys can work on it together. All right, so that's game one. Um, game number two, I find way more fun. So this is just like a very mini game. Game number two, I absolutely love. Uh, my dad showed this to me when I, I don't know, when I was, I don't know, over 20 years ago. So um, or, you know, like when I was very, very little. So here's the way this game works. You draw a five by five grid, and I love this because you could play this anywhere. All you need is a little piece of paper and basically a little scoreboard. So, uh, you know, it takes, you don't need to have a chess board or anything like that. So in, in like 10 seconds, you can get a game going. And you can have more than two players. I just put I and Y, I for Ilya for my initial and Y for you, but you know, just put your initial. So let's say there are three friends, uh, Jane, Bobby, and Alice, you'd be J, B, and A. You could have four players, whatever. Uh, keep in mind, so there are one, two, three, four, five, there are four rows, so there are 20 available squares. So preferably the number of players should be a factor of 20. So two would work, four would work. You can also change this from being a five by five grid to a different size grid, that could be fine too. I find five by five is particularly nice. It's not, it kind of keeps the game uh, fairly quick, but yet still interesting. All right, so here's the way it works. You start off with any five letter word. In, in our case, I've started off with clean. And you might also find that some words are better than others. So some words make for a very interesting game. Others make for a kind of a boring game. And now here's the way it works. So we're going to take turns and I'm going to add one letter at a time. So let's say I add the letter M. I can create the word mean, so I'll get four points. So your goal, in, so there are two games, this first version, which is the main version I've played for a long time, is you want to add only one letter at a time, and you must add one letter, to create the word with the largest number of points possible. So you, you're trying to get as many points as possible. Now, how, like, what, what are the rules? You can only add one letter, and your word can zigzag any way you want. It can go vertically or horizontally, so it can go like this. But it can't go diagonally, and you can't reuse a letter. So you can't say like M, E, A, P, M. You can't reuse that letter M twice somehow. So I'll just kind of play a sample game very quickly and show you how it worked. So let's say I said mean, I get four points. Then someone might put an A here, that would be male. So that person would get also four points. Then I might say, uh, I don't know, N. 
This is not a really good one because it's not many points. Men, I would get three points. Then you could say L-E-A-N-S. That would be a five-letter word, leans, and get five points. Now, a quick note about rules. You guys can set your own rules. I find that the rules I like are no proper nouns, so only you know, general words in the English language. And if I, say, if I have already used a word like lean, you can't just add an S and say leans. However, since nobody has used lean, I might as well add the S and get the larger word with leans. So you can't just conjugate the words. So in other words, if I say walk, you can't, uh, and then later an E appears, you can't say walked and get an, an even larger word. I find that against the spirit of the game. You want to really do new words. But like I said, it's up to you guys to agree to you know, what, what, what counts and what doesn't. So this is the, kind of the official rules that I want to present to you. And, and we can go from here, but I, I'm not going to keep going unless you guys have questions. So um, you'll notice the more it fills in, the more interesting it gets because then you can get a lot of crazy words. And as you're left with like three or four squares, it gets pretty difficult to come up with large words. But at the same time, um, you know, on occasion, you, you might get like a seven letter word or something or eight, even an eight letter word, but that's, you know, pretty rare. Five and six letter words are usually pretty decent. Um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so that's the way this game works. Now, I mean, you can also just to, to clarify, you can go backwards, right? So you can read words like N, like N-A-P, nap. And you want to try to get them to snake as much as possible, get as many points. Like I said, no diagonal move. So you can't read a word like, you can't add a P over here and say nap that way because that's diagonal. All right, so that's the five by five game. And that, that's about points. So after we've filled up all the squares, we're going to add up our totals and whoever has the most wins. Um, as I said, if you have three players, tw uh, 20 squares is not divisible by three, so it would be a little unfair because some people will get extra turns. That said, if you have a particularly strong player, maybe you want to handicap them and then three players would work. Now, I've recently come up with uh, another variation, and this can be pretty cool, which is to not treat this as a competitive game, and in my channel I'll, I'll mention this in future videos, I'm not really big on competition. So, but rather go for humor. So you can, you could still have it be kind of competitive where both you and a friend try to come up with funny things, but you can also work together to try to set each other up to, to do silly or stupid words. So in that case, it's more of a cooperative game or like you're competing, but not really because you want to get more points. You just, you're just seeing who can come, come up with a funnier, you know, like with a really funny thing. The, the objective there is entertainment and not to get points for some ridiculous reason. And this has to do actually with a broader topic if you guys want to explore of finite versus infinite games. So finite games are have to do with games where they're, they're pretty competitive and they end after a finite duration. Whereas infinite games, you're trying to stretch them out as long as possible and they tend to be more cooperative. So for example, let, let me give you guys the example of tennis. So in tennis, the way it's normally played, it's a finite game where we try, one of us tries to win the point. But we could play it as an infinite or cooperative game where we just try to hold a long rally of shots. So in that sense, you might just want to say, hey, let's see if we can get 30 shots in a row without hitting the net or going out of bounds. So that would be an infinite game. And these can be very interesting. So, you know, we can turn this from a finite game to an infinite game. I mean, clearly it's going to end, but your goal is not to outdo the other person or to kind of get rid of a square to prevent them from getting a large number of points, but rather to work together to get a fun game going. So try both of those versions. So like in this one, I don't care if it's a three letter word or a two letter word or some sort of bad word. The idea is just to entertain each other and do stupid, funny things. Um, I'll leave that up to you guys. So if you guys have any um, further interesting thoughts on this, I'd love to hear them. All right, so here are the two games. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, I forgot to mention that both of these games can be a pretty cool way to work on vocabulary as well. 
it's not going to really boost your vocabulary that much, but occasionally you'll find yourself asking, hey, is that a word? Or, you know, somebody, like, you, you'll find a word or you, your friend thinks they found a word, and that can get you, you know, going to the dictionary and looking up words. And I find, you know, like, since it's in game format, you are pretty, pretty, you know, you're going to be pretty excited to see if that's actually a word. Also, you'll find that if you happen to know a lot of words, it'll definitely give you an edge in these games. So, in that sense, you know, while it's not like probably the number one vocabulary building exercise, I would consider this a, a tool in your toolkit in helping you build and kind of assess your vocabulary.